Hi, welcome to Manas Shiel YouTube channel. Before we start kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Let's start the video. If you haven't watched the previous video, I link it in the description box, or you can click here. Tensor Volume 19 Chapter 1 The First Battle After War Meeting The battle was over. The forces that had been fighting outside the castle withdrew, as soon as Feldway had, and they all left the scene. That's why we were all gathering, to meet in the conference room, where it was now safe. Benamer and I participated, along with Sally, Diablo as well. The night captains of Leon's forces were also there. And Guy and the other demons. There was also the mysterious helper Sylvia San, Omija's mother, who joined in, not to be forgotten, was the important witness, ex-demon Lord Kazlam, A.K. Kigali. I succeeded in using isolation on her at the very last moment, so she was not seriously injured. However, Tyr, who had been protecting Kigali, was badly injured. Because the recovery potion was not working on her, Meadle San, the leader of the White Knights who specialized in recovery, was currently taking care of her in the hospital room. The only way to overcome an attack of the ultimate level was through one's own will. I could only pray for Tyr's recovery. Well, I was worried about Tyr, but there was not much I could do about it. What mattered now was the future, which was why we were here. Each of us would report to the others, and share any information about the enemy. The goal was to review our strategies for the future. As soon as our eyes met, a certain someone came right at me. Rumuru Khan. It was Gi. He seemed to be holding a grudge against me for ignoring him on the battlefield, and I was positive he only had complaints, so I decided to use my it never happened skill to the fullest, and cover it up. You bastard, how dare you ignore me that time. No no, I didn't. I have no idea what you mean by ignoring you. You were looking right at me. I, I didn't notice you at all. More importantly, I'm just glad that everyone's okay. Hey, don't just change the subject. Besides, Leon's been taken away, so there's no way that everyone's okay. That's true. But still, we had already taken that into account, right? Now, now, things are still on schedule with Leon. You mean the plan that you were talking about before? I can't help, but think you're just pushing off the problem, are really you sure about this? Maybe. Gee glared at me. Regarding Leon, I had actually thought of a plan beforehand. As Seal San had suggested, using predation on Leon, and destroying the control circuit itself was a surefire countermeasure. The main reason I didn't do that was not because I believed in Leon, rather, I didn't like the idea, physiologically speaking. That was not a joke, but there were other reasons. The first reason was to avoid alarming Michael. By leaving Leon here, I wanted Michael to think that there was nothing we could do against him. The second reason was the hope for the best strategy. But you agreed when we discussed it, didn't you? If Leon, who is under the enemy's control, comes back to his senses after attacking, we can turn the power gap upside down. Well, yeah. I agree that it's a reasonable plan, assuming that Leon is safe. If we can get to the point where Leon is attacking, that alone would give us an advantage. That's what I was thinking. He was right about me pushing off the problem, and there was still the question of whether or not I'd be able to conveniently get there, but if this went well, we could easily take out one of the enemies. Regardless of the number of troops, if we could replace Leon's strength with our own, the battle would be as good as one. As soon as Seal Sense suggested that, I had made up my mind. In any case, the die had been cast. Now that Leon had been taken, I had no choice but to act with faith in the success of the mission. Um, is Leon Sam going to be okay? Alris asked, and I gave him a big nod in response. We have the means to free him, so don't worry. It would be bad if he was suddenly executed, but I didn't think Michael would do such an nonsensical thing. That was also why I had approved Seal Sense plan. Either way, we're out of options. Let's trust His Majesty Remure. So then, here's the plan. Claude Sense spoke and re-established the situation. He still seemed dissatisfied, but this achieved my goal of diverting the conversation. Never mind Leon, then. But Ramirakan, you definitely made eye contact with me back then, didn't you? Damn it, this guy, he just won't let it go. Um, what are you talking about? Don't you dare play dumb with me. You bastard, I was having such a hard time dealing with Velzard, and you just ran away without even pretending to help me. I didn't run away. I trusted you, you know. Ha. As always, you're such a smooth talker. The point is, if you had just quickly come to the rescue, we wouldn't have had to go through all that trouble. Hold on, none of that was my fault. 
Whoa, whoa, what are you saying when you're the ones who didn't contact us? We were on alert, and responded as quickly as possible. Ha, huh. isn't that what the magic transfer circle was for? It didn't activate. I mean, shouldn't you have been able to make a call with this ring under any circumstances? That's right, I was told that the demon's ring, which I had received upon becoming a demon lord, would allow me to contact the others under all circumstances. And yet, neither Gi nor Leon had contacted me. If Dino hadn't told me, the response might have been delayed even further. I hope that he would consider that a bit more. Ah, that's right. That ring was made by Velzard, so she could easily sabotage it. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, well if he says that so openly, I can't really say anything back. Um, yeah. Well then, let's just say that it was both of our faults this time. You're right. It would be a problem if there was any conflict between us, so let's stop fighting right now. So that's what we did. There were still a few things I wasn't clear on, but honestly speaking, it was too much trouble to argue further. I would just be the adult this time. But enough of that. So, why are these people sitting on the floor? The people I was staring at were Rain and Misery. For some reason, they had been forced to sit on the floor the moment they were called into the room. Incidentally, Leon's castle was made of stone, so the floor was completely covered with marble. It was difficult to sit upright even on tatami mats, so sitting upright on the floor in such a place seemed quite strenuous. Oh, those guys. Do you want to hear about it? If you ask me if I want to hear about it, I'll only feel troubled. These eyes were kind of scary, and I didn't want to get involved. Oh, I'm not interested in. Actually, these two dumbasses were having fun drinking, while we were all fighting desperately. I'm also, little pissed off, so I'm trying to figure out what to do. I said I wasn't interested in hearing about it, but I think he just wanted to complain. Or rather, did they seriously do that? Is that really true? I asked, not to Guy, but to Rain and the others. Misery remained distant and silent, but Rain appealed to me with tears in her eyes. No, it's not. It's a tragic misunderstanding, Ramuru-sama. As soon as I heard that, I understood. It was not a misunderstanding. Don't listen to her. You'll soil your ears. Okay. We don't have much time anyway, so let's just hurry and exchange information. I jumped in at Guy's words. The others, who had been watching our conversation, seemed to be silent on the matter. Diablo was the only one who shook his head in disgust, but he didn't seem to want to interfere. So, we left Rain crying and Misery looking like an idiot, and got straight down to business. It was now time to listen to everyone's opinions in order. Although there had been a tangent in the middle, the report went by smoothly. Incidentally, the aforementioned tangent was the exchange made by Khan and Miss Aura when they reported. When it was their turn, Khan and Oxian stood up, but then Khan had turned from everyone, and bowed to Guy to relay his wish. Under normal circumstances, I understand that it would be an unforgivable sin to speak to our master, the Red King, Rouge. However, I beg of you to listen to me. He was so sincere that Guy allowed him to speak. In response, Khan requested, Can you please forgive my lord Misery Sama's iniquity? I agreed with him. She had been sitting upright on the floor for the entire discussion. She was probably okay, because she was a demon, but I was still wondering when it would be time to let her go. However, it wasn't Guy who became enraged, but Misery, the one who was being punished. Khan. You fool. It is unforgivable. She tried to reprimand Khan with great force even as she was sitting on the floor. It was Guy who stopped her. Now, hold on a minute. You've grown up, Khan, for being able to talk to me. Fine then. For that, I'll let Misery off the hook this time. True to his word, Guy forgave Misery and ordered everyone to have a drink. That was all well and good, but then came a new problem. As you can imagine, Rain, who was still sitting on the floor, did the same thing. Now it was Miss Aura's turn to stand up and speak, and like Khan, she wished for her master Rain to be released. But Guy wouldn't allow it. It didn't seem to be for a petty reason, such as it being the second version. I'm also pretty good at reading the atmosphere, so I could tell that Guy was annoyed. I think Miss Aura noticed it too, and when he said no, she quickly backed off. Knowing when to back off was a sign of competence. It made me think that Miss Aura was a very capable person, unlike what I'd expect from Rain's subordinate. However, there are also people who can't read the atmosphere. Why is that, Miss Aura? Why do you give up so easily, when you're so much better than Khan? You have to try harder to help me. Why am I the only one sitting on the floor, while Misery is free? I don't get it. And on and on she went. I was convinced. As I thought, Rain possessed the unconstrained self-indulging trait of the youngest child. Miss Aura admonished Rain. Please give up. If you continue committing more crimes. Finally, Rain seemed to have calmed down after being told that much. She glanced at Guy and seemed to understand that she was in a bad position. 
You should be a little more sincerely sorry, you know. Do you understand what you did wrong in the first place? Yes. When Gi asked her about it, Rain tilted her head with a blank expression. It was cute, but now that I had seen her true nature, all I could sense was annoyance. Gi spoke to Rain with a deeply tired expression. I don't have time for this, but I'll be the one in trouble if I let you get away with your misdeeds. Those empty bottles lying around the igloo, they're rare and expensive liquors, aren't they? How did you get them? It doesn't look like you stole them, or did you mug one of your subordinates again? Um, if she's even doing that, then she's definitely a bad child. Or rather, why would a demon even mug someone? Even without committing such petty crimes, she didn't seem to have any money troubles. While I was thinking about that, Miss Aura interrupted me, as if she couldn't stand to watch anymore. May I be allowed to speak? You may. With Gi's permission, Miss Aura defended Rain. Even our lord, as expected, she is not that clever. No, not that clever. Rain was about to say something, but everyone ignored her. This incident reminded me of the importance of daily conduct. But at the very least, she is someone who does things for a reason, so you can trust her on that point. Hmm. In the first place, it wasn't money that Rain Sama needed. Hmm. Then how did this guy? Although he didn't listen to Rain's words, he was taking Miss Aura's plea seriously. Seeing him like that made me feel that Gi was surprisingly decent. And then something strange happened here. Now, now, that should be enough of that, correct? We are in the middle of an important conversation about the future, and Rain's punishment is insignificant. And then Diablo took Rain by the shoulders. It was so blatantly unnatural that not only me, but also Gi, was staring at Diablo. I can still believe in Diablo after all. Rain's eyes were sparkling as she spoke, as if she was impressed, while the others were just confused. Something is going on. My gut was telling me so. That's suspicious. Gi seemed to agree, muttering to himself. Diablo, it's not good to keep secrets, okay? Kufu, Kufufufu. Ramur Sama, I would never hide anything from Ramur Sama. However, that person seemed so pitiful that I felt that I should offer a little help. No, 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 you don't have that kind of personality. I almost said that out loud, but I held myself back and swallowed it. Instead, I just stared at him. This was very effective in such situations. And sure enough, Diablo's eyes began to waver. I had thought that he was a demon with a weak mind, but it turned out that I was right. He immediately became flustered and told the truth. No, that fine liquor was actually a gift from me to Rain. Ha. Huh. That's crazy. No matter how much of an agreement you two came to, why would you give Rain something when you've been in conflict until not too long ago? That was absolutely correct. Well, but now I knew why Diablo confessed so easily. As long as we had the finished liquor bottle as physical evidence, we could quickly determine the distribution route. Saui was here as well, so he must have decided that it would be impossible to keep quiet about it. That was all well and good, but the real problem was the relationship with the culprit, Rain. While Gi and Diablo were quarreling, I gave Saui a look. He understood what I was asking, and promptly secured the evidence. I saw empty bottles of magic black rice amazic, traditional Japanese sake, black rice refined sake, and many other products, all of which had increasingly higher alcohol content. The person couldn't buy this stuff, even if they paid a lot of money, because it was not available on the market. It was only available in our country, so even if it wasn't Sai who was investigating, one could easily identify the culprit. I mean, come on. Uh, you mentioned that you were having a drink earlier, did you actually drink this much? That's right. It's only natural that I was mad, right? You have to do something about them, Remuer. Well, of course that would make someone angry. I didn't think I'd end up feeling sorry for Gi, but it was the boss's job to clean up after his subordinates. I was actually surprised that Gi was so forgiving, only making them sit upright on the floor. And yet, Rain was making excuses. You're wrong. This was a necessary item for advanced psychological warfare, and we weren't trying to have fun on our own. Psychological warfare. Yes, that's right. I went through a lot of trouble to acquire these items, so that Pico and Gracia would speak up. In fact, I think I deserve a pat on the back. This kid was incredible. Even in this situation, she was insisting that it was all her own achievements. She's a primordial demon, after all. Her mental strength was nothing to sniff at. Diablo also seemed to adhere to the theory that as long as you didn't admit defeat, you hadn't lost, so I guess they were similar at heart. So, Diablo, I'm curious as well. I don't think you would give something to Rain for free, so what kind of a deal did you make? I would leave it to Gi to judge Rain's claim, and I would pursue Diablo's involvement. We will, that's. He seemed to think that he couldn't lie to me, and was slurring his words, but that didn't last long. After all, Sai was there too. Get on with it. 
Sally's words were enough to make Diablo give up. He confessed that he had been supplying the items in question in return for Rain's share of paintings. I see, so the unknown artist who was distributing my paintings was Rain. That makes sense. That was why we couldn't trace her. But it seemed that my wild guess that Diablo could be an accomplice to the portrait crime was wrong. I couldn't blame him if he was only supplying goods because it was a valid act. However, I didn't intend to leave my portraits unattended, so I let Sally deal with it. Please rest assured. I have already ordered Saka to search Diablo's room. Isn't that a bit excessive? No. It infringes upon his publicity rights and is a serious crime deserving of punishment. A search warrant has already been issued, so there are no problems. What quick work. As expected, it could only be Sally. Diablo was crumbling in shock, but I pretended not to see it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy it.